Hi, so I want to show you an interesting problem, which is showing that undecidable languages are not closed under concatenation. And you can show that this property still holds among other sets, such as non-regular languages, non-context-free languages, a whole bunch of things, but I'm going to show it for undecidable. So what does this actually mean to be not closed? So let's say that we have two languages, L1 and L2, are undecidable. Then what we're going to show here is that if we look at L1 concatenated with L2, then this thing is not necessarily undecidable. It may actually be decidable. Okay. So what are the two languages I want to consider? So the first language is I want to consider H which is the halting problem. So this is going to be the halting problem. So uh, remember what uh, this is, although it's not necessary for the proof here, which is all pairs of Turing machine and string. So M is a Turing machine. Uh, w is some string in sigma star, although it does, it's not really important what the alphabet is necessarily. And M halts on W. Okay, so the real important thing here is that this thing is undecidable. Okay, and, and that's all that really matters. And what we're going to assume here, so we're going to assume that H is encoded in binary, which we can do without loss of generality. So if we have uh, a bunch of strings over a certain alphabet, then we can just convert it into binary. So we can convert any decimal number into binary. We can convert any number from any base to any other one or any alphabet of size at least two into an alphabet of size two. In fact, we could have done this in unary too, although it's, uh, it's important that it's in binary here. So we'll assume that H here is a subset of zero one star. Okay, that's, that's just a way of saying that it's encoded in binary. Okay, so it's an undecidable set, uh, subset of zero, one star. Now, now I want to form the two languages that are going to be both undecidable and their concatenation is decidable. Okay, so I'm going to have two languages here, A and B. So the first language, A, is going to be uh, zero H, and by this notation, I mean putting a zero on the front of every string in H, okay? So that's what this notation means. So zero on front of all W in that set H, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to union that with a different set. It's not a U, it's a union with a set that has every string starting with a one and just concatenating it on front of zero one star, literally every string, and then unioning that with just the empty string. So the only real change that we did here is any string that starts with one, we include it, include the empty string, and uh, any string in this set A right here that starts with a zero corresponds to some string in H. Okay, so take everything in H, put a zero on front, stick that in A, then take every string that starts with one, every single one, put it in A, and also put the empty string in. I'm going to claim that A is undecidable. So A is undecidable. And the reason is, um, if we get input that is, um, that starts with a one, uh, suppose a d decider for A, if it gets a string that starts with one, we immediately say yes, because all strings with one start in there. If it starts with a zero, then, then that's equivalent to solving the halting problem on the string taking away that first character. So if the string starts with a zero, take away that character, and then that is some instance to the halting problem and we need to be able to figure out whether that uh, Turing machine ac accepts that particular input or halts on it. It doesn't actually really matter if it's the halting problem or some other problem here. 
Okay, so A is undecidable because it's equivalent to deciding the halting problem. It's just encoded slightly differently. Okay, so then now I'm going to form a set B, which is very similar. But here, I'm going to put a 1 on the front of every string in H. It's still undecidable at this point. Then I'm going to do a similar thing, but uh, having strings that start with a 0. And every string that starts with 0, I'm going to put it in B. Any string that starts with 1 is corresponding to a string that's in the halting set, H. And then again, I'm going to include uh, the empty string in here. So B is also undecidable for very similar reasons. If the string that we get starts with one, take the one off, and then that's equivalent to solving the halting problem. Okay, so then what I want to claim here is that A concatenated with B is in fact equal to a zero one star. So it's not just it, actually I can say is there, it's literally zero one star. And that's very obviously decidable because we not only we can make a DFA for it, you say yes on all input strings. Every input string you say yes on this. So let's actually figure out what this is. So uh, let's uh, write down A concatenated with B. Well, it's just this top guy concatenated with this bottom guy. So we're going to have 0h union, oops, uh, with a 1, 0, 1 star, union the empty string. And then that is going to be concatenated with uh, 1h. I'm just literally copying down the, the two languages we have upstairs. Zero, union all the uh, strings start with 0, union the empty string. So let's evaluate what this is. So we can distribute the, the union, so, so we can have distribute the red set across each of the th three things over here. So what we're gonna get is we're gonna have zero H con concatenated with everything over here. So one H union uh, zero, zero one star union the empty string. And then union, the same idea. So I'm going to actually copy and paste this blue guy three times, or twice, I should say. So I'm going to paste them down and then paste them down. So then the, the term on the outside here is going to be one, zero, one star. And then this thing is the empty string. I should put a union out here. So it's the language is equivalent to saying uh, this thing, union, this big thing, union, this big thing. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and expand this out. So we're gonna get 0H1H. That's just literally what that is. Union 0H0, zero, 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 01 star union well if we're concatenating onto the empty string that's not going to do anything so that's just going to be zero h nothing special there so union one oops jump the gun so one zero one star one h union one zero one star zero zero one star and again, concatenating on the empty string doesn't do anything. So, so we got that. I, I promise this is going somewhere. So again, concatenating on the empty string does, does nothing. So we're going to get 1 uh, H union 0, 0, 1 star union. The empty string concatenating with itself is also the empty string. Okay, so let's try to an analyze what's happening here. So any string that includes a zero is automatically included by this. So in fact, what we can do, and what I'm gonna do here, is any term that's in here that starts with a zero, I'm gonna throw away because it's already included right here. So I'm gonna eliminate it there, eliminate it there, eliminate it there, and I think that's every single one. 
Okay, so let's see. So well, let's look at this. So this thing is going to include any string that starts with a one and has at least one zero somewhere else. Well, actually, actually, let's look at this term. I didn't even see it. Well, it's got a one followed by any string. So this thing will swallow up any other string that starts with a one because it's already included. So here we can eliminate it that, 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 and this thing is the only string left over. So this has every string that starts with a one. This thing has everything that starts with a zero. And this thing is the only other possible string, the thing with no characters in it. So therefore, this concatenation really is zero, one star because every string is in one of these three sets and they're all union together. So that was a quick proof that undecidable languages are not closed under uh, concatenation. And you can get similar type results for star and other things. So one thing I should note here is that this is for all undecidable languages. This is not saying recognizable languages or decidable languages. This is, if you consider every undecidable language in one set, then this is not closed under that. You can narrow it down to what it exactly is uh, for this proof because we have a particular language here. And so you can actually narrow it down a little further, but we're only talking about all undecidable languages here, not just decidable or just recognizable, okay? So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about undecidable languages into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.